And so in this video, we're going to modify the main and string XML files, which are going to be found in the resources folder. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the layout and values folders from there. And I'm going to go ahead and modify the main. So I'm going to double click main and I'm going to go ahead and double click strings. So we've got both of them here to work with. And I'm going to go ahead and start by creating the strings for this particular application. So I'm going to go to strings. And I've got two of them there to work with. And rather than modifying the hello string that we've got, I'm just going to go ahead and add some more strings here. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the add button there. And we're going to make sure string is highlighted and hit OK. And I get to name the string. Now the particular case sensitivity for this one is typically um, when we create strings, we want to have everything lowercase. And so I'm going to go ahead and just type in intro for the name of this particular string. And the value is going to say your total tally is. And I'll go ahead and put a semicolon after that. We're going to use this as our string. Your total tally is. Now one of the things, if you're a programmer, you're probably looking at this saying, well, where are the double quotes for the value? We don't have to enter the double quotes in here at all. The spaces are okay for my string. It's going to know how to handle it as a string with spaces and so forth. So we just want to type in what we want to actually display there for our string. I'm going to go ahead and hit add again. And we're going to choose string. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And the next string that we're going to be working with, I'm going to go ahead and use it as plus one. So I'm going to type in plus one. And the value is going to be the plus symbol and the number one. And I'm going to go ahead now and hit add a string. OK. This one's going to be called minus one. I'm going to go ahead and put the minus symbol and the number one. And so those are my strings. Now this last one you're going to notice it still says string here. If I go to file, save, and resave the strings XML file, you're going to notice that now it's been updated. So those are the strings that I want to work with. Intro, plus one, and minus one. So let's go back to my code, or close that and go back to my main XML. And what we're going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and magnify this a little bit larger. You're going to see that I'm still working with a 3.7 inch screen and I'm going to leave everything the default the way that it is. The string that I've got for this one I want to modify. So I'm going to go ahead and move over to the code view and rather than it being referencing the string hello, I want it to reference the string intro. And that was all lowercase, so I'm going to go ahead and type in intro. If I switch back over here to the graphical interface, you're going to see that now it says your total tally is. What I want to move over now is going to be a Basically, it's going to be the edit text field here. But it's going to look like a text box for us to work with. It's going to be located in the text fields. So I'm going to move over a text box, and there we go. We'll drop drop it off, and the edit text field goes ahead and fills in here for us. I also want to move over two buttons. So those are under the widgets. And I'm going to go ahead and find the button, and there's button. I'm going to drag one there. I'm going to drag one more right below it. Now the buttons didn't expand all the way and fill the entire parent like the text view or edit text that we have here. So what I want to do for the button is I'm going to go ahead and drag it and you're going to notice the button changes in size. And you can see that it says 113 dp at the moment. Now unlike a lot of the other different programming um, applications you may be familiar with if you are a programmer, we're not going to use pixels for the most part when we're working with Android devices. And the reason being is because the resolutions are so different for all the different devices, they've got a better standard for doing that. And the DP stands for Density Independent Pixels. And it's a better way of doing um, our sizes for particular objects just in the fact that there's so many changes in resolution, we don't want them to be so small on certain devices and so large on others. And so it's more consistent. But I want to keep dragging it. I could let it go now and it would be this size, or I could keep dragging it to the very edge and you'll notice that it turns to fill parent. I want it to fill all the way across. So I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing here. I'm going to drag this one all the way to the side and let go when it says fill parent. So these are the four objects that I want to work with on my particular graphical front end for my application. And so what I want to do now is go back over to the XML side of things and we're going to make some changes here. Okay, first off, what I want to make a change of is I want to change the text that's in my buttons. And so I'm going to find the buttons there and you can see where it says Android text and you've got the button. Now this little yellow squiggly line that's underneath it is a little caution. And if I hover it over, you'll see it says hard-coded string button. And what it's asking for or what it's trying to tell us is maybe we should be using a string here that's not hard-coded or an absolute text value here, but maybe a string. 
that we've got or a variable that we've got. And so we're going to go ahead and we do have one created. I'm going to go ahead and reference that now. So I'm going to use the at symbol. And then I'm going to go ahead and type in string, and that's all lowercase, the forward slash, and then the name of the first string that I want to work with is plus one. And I'm going to go ahead and come down here and type in the at symbol, string, forward slash, minus one. It still has the squiggly lines, and that'll go away if I choose file, save. Should update them both, and now that they look like they're just normal code here for us. And so we've modified that. If I look at my graphical front end, you can see the plus one and the minus one. Now those buttons are a little small. I want to make them so that they're larger and kind of almost fill the screen. So I'm going to change the height of them. Rather than wrap content, I'm going to set a fixed height for this. So I'm going to go ahead and come over here and change wrap content. And for my application, I want to make it 150 dp. So I'm going to go ahead and change that one. And I'll change this one as well to 150 dp. And we'll go ahead and look at the graphical layout and take a look at how my phone looks. I'll go ahead and minimize it a little bit. So now you can see I've got a big huge button for plus one and quite a big size one for minus one as well. So it's going to be easy for us to push if we were using this on a graphical um, or an Android device. So let's switch back over here to the XML. And I'd like to point out that we have this thing called request focus that you can see here on my edit text. And what that does is it sets the focus, or basically when we run the application in our virtual machine or in our Android device, the cursor is going to be blinking there at that device waiting for us to do something. So that's the object that currently has the focus at the moment. And so what we're going to do now is make sure that we have it saved. Here's my main XML. I'm going to go ahead and choose File, Save. And it's going to go ahead and save that there for us. And let's go ahead and run this application now. I'm going to choose Run As as an Android application and hit OK. And it's going to load up my Android virtual device. It's going to take a moment for this to load up. And now that my Android device is up and running, I'm going to go ahead and unlock it. And you can see here's our particular application up and running. And I don't have any code to run on the back end, but I can see that I've got a application that's got the two buttons, the plus and the minus here, and I've got basically a text box that's going to be able to change here in just a second whenever we're writing with. So this is the application that I've got. And now here's where I want to point out the fact that we do have more applications that we've already ran in our particular virtual device. And so if I go here to the menu, actually let's go to home, and I'm going to go ahead now and click here down at the bottom, and you can see the different applications that we have. If I scroll down, my mouse, there it is. Here's our tally application. And you can see the display text was in here from the project one. So we do have applications that are on this virtual device and you can see the names of them. I wanted to point that out for you as well. You can see it up here called tally. And we've got our edit text as our text box. We've got our text view here as our text uh, label. And then I've got my two buttons here. So this concludes the video on setting up the main and XML files within my Android device. In the next video we're going to start looking at modifying the code within Java.